to the hardware store, several periscopes from what I understand, and, oh boy. <laughs> and everything. So, uh, 2015. 2015. Yes. Everybody's doing it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll talk a little periscope here. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but I'm Mike Sorg. If you guys don't know me, uh, Sorgatron Media, I do a couple of podcasts around here. Wrestling Mayhem Show, Awesome Cast, stuff like that. Also involved, uh, pretty big into pod camp for several years. Uh, Missy, mo more Missy than I in the organizational side, or you know, or co-organizers. We have some other ones here as well, some of other pod camp organizers. Uh, and we are setting up for the big 10-year anniversary, Pod Camp Pittsburgh 10. I don't know too many of us that are left. It used to be Pod Camp was everywhere. The Nashville, I remember, Boston's where it started, and. And it's nice to know that we're still surviving here. So, also nice to know that podcasting is still a big part of it. And uh, which it kind of felt like it was fading away for a little bit, didn't it? So, not according to the stats. Not according to the stats. So, you, so the, like, we got people here that are going to know. <laughs> um, but, anyways, and we're here at the great hardware store. Uh, check them out at workhardpgh.com if I got that domain right. Um, they're awesome co working, incubating podcast studio space if you haven't had a chance yet. There's uh, Yoda. Look, there's Yoda behind us. It's amazing. There's Ratchet and Clank over there. That's the most random video game characters, <laughs> but I love it. I love it. There's an astronaut over here. They got a great podcasting studio, a green screen downstairs. Um, really cool thing uh, popping up here in Allentown, not PA. We had that confusion for a moment. Um, <laughs> Allentown, PA, that's like six hours away. We're serious about this. We're very serious about this. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, but we have Chris O'Connor with us Hi. Uh, from Lipson representing. Uh, of course, Lipson, which uh, I'd like, uh, it stands for Liberated Syndication, right? Liberated Syndication. And I got the, they've been around, they've, they've definitely predated uh, uh, anybody I know's work in podcasting, um, started in 2004, and uh, and pretty much every time I hear about podcasting, Lipson's the name that comes up. It's one like, of the top. You get, you, there's either like, uh, you're, you're, you're crazy and you're self-hosting, sorry Doug, and uh, <laughs> I couldn't even imagine self-hosting a podcast all these years. I, I don't think I would have lasted the near 10 years uh, in podcasting <laughs> if, if, if I was doing that all myself. I, WordPress still scares me sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, 18 million monthly audience members, according to their website. Uh, 10,000 podcasts is hosted by Slipson. Uh, 1.6 billion podcast downloads in 2011 alone, and the stats just are nuts from there. And right here in Pittsburgh, I love that representing. Uh, so, and, and tell us, so what do you do with Lipson? <laughs> Man, I just got asked that don't? question earlier. And it was what like, do you don't do with Lipson? Uh, I'm primarily podcaster support. Mm -hmm. So if you need help setting up your show or if you've just signed up for Lipson, you don't know, you know where to turn or how to use it or anything like that, uh, you probably get me or one of the other two people in our support staff. I also run our knowledge base and I do all the videos and appear on a couple different shows, and, but none of that's important. And so that's, that's interesting. So so you do so you're you're talking about the people making things. You're making some things for Lipson yourself yeah, as well. So things, it's yeah. kind of nice. You're kind of eating the dog food a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if I'm going to support people who are doing it, I should probably do a little myself. Let's talk about this. So so right off the bat, you know, uh, we, we we even back at PodCamp Nine back in when we do that November was it? Mm -hmm. uh, we were like, hey hey, everybody realized PodCamp is back. <laughs> Podcast is back. Podcasting is 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 has resurfaced, and we have serial and 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 everybody's getting on board with it. But uh, we didn't go anywhere. You guys didn't go anywhere. And you said the numbers reflect there was nothing, no real. Talk. The mainstream media rediscovered podcasting. Mm -hmm. But podcasting itself never really went anywhere. The numbers never really declined. There is no real resurgence from what we can see. Um, when we started hearing the term resurgence, it was kind of like, we didn't go anywhere. Hi, we've been here. We, we're right oh. here. We're still growing, and we've been growing. But Serial came out, and mm -hmm. you know, all the all the mainstream media was like, "Oh, what's this show? Oh, podcasting. Oh, hey, we should jump on that podcasting bandwagon." And now everybody needs a podcast. It's great for business. Mm -hmm. but Certainly. <laughs> Certainly. So, so uh, podcasting in general, this is something. It's kind of a misnomer of a name. I'm starting to disclaim that when I talk about podcasting to oh, new people. Are you really going to go into the whole, like, should it be called a podcast I, Well, it, it, I, I have a problem <laughs> when I have clients that will uh, say, we're going to do our podcast. I was like, 
we're sitting here on Google Hangout doing this for YouTube. Why this isn't a podcast? And of course, we put it on Lips and we put it on you know a podcast thing, and people can mm-hmm. find it in, in iTunes and stuff. And uh, but but it's kind of is that a safe word for us to be using? Yeah, I think so. For, for what we do? It's been, the, you know, it, some people would say that it started off being called Netcasts, and then mm-hmm. iPods came around, and Steve Jobs, and Apple, and all that fun stuff, and it became podcasts, and podcasting is too difficult. Of, you know, and it's been around, the name has been around so long mm-hmm. that I really don't think there's much to the concept of saying, oh, well, do we maybe need to go back to Netcasts or call it Webcasts or something like that. I think if you're talking about your own show and you're walking up to somebody and you're trying to build that show to somebody, hey, you know, I've got this show, uh, it's how you sell it to your market mm-hmm. and who your market is. You know, some markets are going to be more technically inclined and you say podcast and they're like, boom, they're right there with you. But other markets are going to be like, my mom has no idea what it is that I do for a living. She doesn't know what a podcast is. But when I say radio on the internet, oh, so I can go to this website and listen to you. Yep, and that's the start of it. So it's how you're selling your show, not necessarily renaming the technology. Mm-hmm. It's a marketing thing. Certainly. Uh, do you find, is, is iTunes still a cornerstone of that? We have other services. There's been some announcements lately we can get into here in a little bit. Um, you know, uh, how many people are on Android at this point, you know? So it's really kind of, I, I do a poll every once in a while and say, how do you guys listen to us? And I get, you know, on the site, on this app, on that app, on an app I've never heard of before. And I'm like, how did I get there <laughs> as a podcaster? Uh, but, you know, it, how important is iTunes today versus obviously since 10 years ago when we all started, you know, Ellipsin and everything. Um, is it still as important to get your show in there? More important than many of us would like to think. Uh, most of those apps you're talking about, like Downcast, for example, they actually pull from an iTunes API, meaning they actually connect to the iTunes database to pull iTunes' directory. So even if your audience, the majority of downloads across our network is actually coming from Apple Core Media, which is a generic user agent for uh, apps on iOS, so mobile Safari, your Safari browser, or if you're using something like Downcast, that would be considered Apple Core Media if you're looking in your stats. Those are the majority of the downloads. That's not iTunes specifically, necessarily, but it's getting there from an iDevice of some sort, and it's getting there oftentimes through an iTunes database. So uh, whether we love it or hate it, it's still important. And that's why it, it, I've noticed the discussion has been, uh, I listened to a, a podcast with Group Therapy. Mm-hmm. They have an yep. awesome podcast going yep. on. Just, Great group of guys. Yeah, yeah. I think we're both a part of that community on Google+. Plus. Go over to Google+, Plus and look up the podcast with Group Therapy. Mm-hmm. They're great. Um, but uh, a lot of the discussion about, and I've been trying to do this too, you know, and it's hard to explain, Hey, I know none of you are really on iTunes and have iPhones, but can you go up, you know, just, just, just get into that iTunes you never use, and can you just go ahead and rate us, please, you know, just help us out yeah. a little bit. Just hit that subscribe button a little bit. I feel yeah. like we're kind of cheating a little bit, but, but it, it, it helps. Right. And especially yeah. if you have an engaged audience, you know, that will maybe go do that kind of thing. It'll, it'll help in those ratings. Because those ratings also transfer too, right? Uh, transfer to how so? Like, like the, the discovery. Oh, well, you, you're, you're talking about iTunes ranking. You're right. ranking inside the iTunes store. Right. Right. And that is based on a number of things, um, uh, magic unicorns, uh, Skittles, <laughs> rainbows. It's also based on uh, subscriptions inside iTunes specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if somebody subscribes using Pocket Casts, that's not going to help your ranking inside the mm-hmm. iTunes store. It's, it's, it's subscriptions inside iTunes. Uh, it's ratings and reviews inside iTunes. It's number of all-time downloads. So you might find a show in iTunes that hasn't had a new upload for three years, but they've been around for 10. You're a new show. You've been putting out for six months consistently, and you have more downloads right now may not necessarily matter. They may still rank higher than you because they've been around longer, so their all-time downloads mm-hmm. are higher, and they have more reviews because they've been around longer. So it's, it's really an uphill battle when you're talking about iTunes rankings. Right, right. And it doesn't seem, there's a lot, it doesn't seem like 
iTunes gives you a lot of tools. No. To work with that. <laughs> they don't like, give you any tools. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mystery. It's like, I, it's one reason that's kept me from moving a lot of my shows to something like Libsyn is, is that, like, well, what do I do with my link? You know, and, and I know there's, there's solutions and I can talk to people and we can work it out. Uh, but, but it's always been like, what, what happens? Do I have to start a new feed? Do I, do I have to get all these people to resubscribe? Gremlins. It is gremlins. It's gremlins. <laughs> the podcasting gremlins, certainly. Um, so, so, Let's talk about, we we're talking about some different platforms. Um, you know, Stitch is another one that's been a, a big one. I know but mm-hmm. I use that, and a lot of people seem to use that. Uh, what was that, that is there? Uh, Stitcher was bought by Deezer. Bought by Deezer, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not familiar, what's Deezer do? Deezer is UK. Okay. They're not US based yet. Uh, they are music streaming and decided, I guess, kind of like Spotify that I believe we're going to talk about later, yeah. uh, they decided that they wanted um, more original podcast-style content in their directory, and they bought Stitcher. And as far as I know, earlier this month, they kind of made the migration, so Stitcher content is now inside the Deezer app. But again, that's UK. They have not made it to the U.S. yet. Okay. But, but still, yeah. now my stuff's in the U.K. Right. The, yeah. Apparently on a very well-used app. I would suppose. Mm-hmm. So. Now, when was the last time you logged into your Stitcher portal? Uh, well, actually, I just added some shows, so it's, oh, okay. and it's ugly <laughs> in there. It's really ugly it, in there. It is, and I have not seen yeah. anybody's stats actually update in there since earlier this month okay. when they made that move. I so just looking, an interesting tidbit. And, and they've been having problems. Uh, shows I follow and my own shows are not updating in there. Right. And I know there was a good discussion actually out on the community about, hey, I yeah. just saw this big drop, and, my, and, and drop there's nothing to refresh your feed. I mean, it's bad with iTunes because sometimes they're like, they, they, they don't look for your feed on iTunes as much as they used to. But Stitcher is just like, it's three days. I uploaded five shows at the same time. This one still says it's from last week, and there's yeah. nothing. I, I can't even update my picture. You can't update your categories either. Categories? Yeah, it's kind of stuck right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yep, kind of, everybody uh, is. It's uh, not you. Yeah. And it's probably not your feed either. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and uh, so so let, let's talk about the big announcement over uh, this last week, actually. We're getting into that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Which I let's learned go. about from Libsyn. There was this. This was going around on Twitter, so I, I listened to. I think it was the feed, actually, mm, uh, with Rob and Elsie. So, yep, yep. Uh, and Elsie also a presenter at, at PodCamp in the yes. recent years. Mm-hmm. Awesome. It was an awesome podcasting uh, uh, session she did. <laughs> she very much about you know very engaging your audience and and uh, it, it's I recommend it to anybody starting off podcasting mm-hmm. uh, over there on the uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh uh, uh, YouTube channel. But Spotify is kind of the big thing right now. And kind of, kind of a kind of a big thing. Um, it's this has caused me to download it to find out what all the fuss is about because I've been on Pandora, free music, and everything. I'm playing with some Google Music and everything, uh, and iTunes. But uh, but but uh, and we're not talking about the fitness thing, which is exciting. The idea that your music is going to change as you change your pace uh, as you're jogging. I've already tested it. It's a win. <laughs> So, so is that mean, is that also going to apply to my podcast? And I'm going to get am I going to get angry podcast when I start running more? Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can get, not in so I far mean, as I'm aware of. I'm in the pro wrestling side, so I can get the the angry WWE podcast when I'm running run hard, and then like the sock, like that has an occasion, you know, over here. <laughs> but anyways, but no, but Libsyn is, is is a part of this uh, big announcement. Yes, we right? are a Spotify partner. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Right now, Spotify is only accepting. Uh, podcasts from from partners. They mm-hmm. they wanted specifically to work with partners, and we are one of them. Mm-hmm. So, what are they trying to control? Like the quality of content, or just that portal coming into them? It's a beta mm-hmm. right now. It's very beta. There's probably about, from what I can guess, about a hundred shows total wow. that are in the directory right now. It's still pretty small. Okay. Oh, granted, it's it's barely been a week. Yeah. You know, and, and, the, and the announcement only came out last week. It's big week. names. It's the This Week so, in Tech guys. It's right. Mark Maron. It's right. Nerdist. You know, the guys yeah. that have really kind of built that big audience right. over the last few years. So uh, whether or not they plan on opening it up to a, a submission-style process like, say, iTunes is, I don't know. As of right now, they are only working with, port- with partners, and we happen to be one of them. Mm-hmm. 
And and I understand that's not it's not additional. It, it's it's no. in there. It'll, has this already started showing up for people on Libsyn? Uh, it is not. It, what it will do is it will appear as a destination. Okay. So if you are familiar with Libsyn, you log in your Libsyn account. There's a big destinations button on your main menu. You click that. You hit Add New, and there will be a Spotify destination there, and you can fill it out just like you would your RSS feed. Uh, you know, title and show description and all that fun stuff, your author, and that is what will syndicate out to Spotify. Um, that is not opened up yet, again, because it is still a very early beta, uh, but if you keep an eye out, I'd watch blog.lipson.com, I'd watch uh, our Twitter feed, I'd listen to the feed podcast show, um, or you can ask me, and when it's when it's available, you'll see it, you'll know, because we mm. will tell the world about it. <laughs> and, and this is a pretty big audience. I mean, this is uh, one of the big music services out there. It is. And, yeah. uh, of course, 60 it, or 70 million mm -hmm. subscribers. So much subscribers that free or paid. So, so much that they've angered Taylor Swift. Yes. Uh, her well, apparently. at least her record label. At least her record label, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's been an interesting conversation there. <laughs> but, but still, if it's that big, I'd say probably uh, uh, 8 out of 10 people I know are on Spotify. You know, and they were like, why are you still on Pandora? Bless you. And, uh, and, and, and it's, a, it's a huge, huge Disney. And if, now, so as a podcaster, you know, I, I talk about the fracturing a little bit, but really, is it is it a good idea to just get your show on every platform that you can? If it's something that's going to pull from a feed mm -hmm. or is very easy for you to submit to, there's absolutely no reason not to because it's not once once you're in there, there's no extra work that you have to do to get your content there. And if it gets you ten additional listeners. Mm -hmm then that's 10 additional people. And we like to talk about, if, if when you're looking at how many listeners you have on, on your show, if you only get, only get 100 downloads per episode, that is a really big room full of people. Mm -hmm. So if you add 10 more people, that's 110 people. If you add 50 more people, that's 150 people. That's an awfully big room. So why would you want to miss out on that? That's a really good metric. And actually, when I've, I've been down on my own podcast stats, I'm like, oh, man, we used to get like X number, and now we don't. And I look and I used to do, uh, I, I used to have a music group I was a part of, and thinking about, I think we down with five, we down with like 500 last week, right? And I'm like, well, 500 people were in front of me in front of the stage. I'm like, I would be feeling pretty good at that point. You know, so it, that that's really worked out. And even it's uh, a big audience. ThinkUp does that. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. It, it, it's a really cool service that you plug your Facebook and your Twitter into, and it gives you a lot of stats. And they do that. I, I plugged a bunch of my accounts in, and they said, "Well, this one has 150 people. Do you know that's more than the Rolling Stones had at their first concert?" You know, like really, like it really kind of puts it in the context. Or, yeah. or, or uh, it was Gina really, Trapani is one of the developers. Gina Trapani. On that. Uh, yeah. This week in Google, that's how I found out about yeah. it. You know. Um, it originally originated uh, Lifehacker, if anybody's yeah. familiar with that website. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's pretty nice to, to use that. We'll talk about stats a little bit. So when people are getting in the podcast, you talk about like 100, so it's a good number, right? And this is it. I can see, I see that I'm look. I'm just nice. throwing the number out there. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and you say well, that that might be a good number. Well, mm -hmm. that really depends on your show, depends mm -hmm. on your content, depends on your market. Mm -hmm. you know, there are some shows out there that are so niche mm -hmm. that you're never going to get the kind of numbers that a Mark Marin is going to get because no. your mark, that's just not your market, and that's okay. So you're looking more at the percentage of your actual market. If your market is only 2,000 people and you're getting 70% of that, that's that's pretty good saturation. So you really have to look at it as a percentage of your market instead mm -hmm. of just raw numbers. Is, we had a pretty good sample. Uh, we've been experimenting with the one podcast and, and putting the video uh, versions up. And we look at YouTube and one guy, honest newsletter, 2,000 people, you know, you know, great, great traction on that, really good for that person, right? And uh, another one got 40. Mm -hmm. Like, that doesn't sound like much, right? And in, in, in YouTube, you're like, oh, I got like 10 people on this, right? But from that 40, that person got three clients in a field where three clients is some pretty good money. So it kind of depends right. on what you're doing the podcast for. Yep. Some people do it as a kind of an addition to their service, talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also just people that want to 
have a conversation, right? That's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're out there to make yourself uh, known as an expert in your field that otherwise you wouldn't necessarily have a good platform to do that. Some people do it to connect with their audience, literally connect, you know, on a different level that voice can give you that just text on a screen can't give you. It's, it's a connection with your audience. Uh, some people do it in order to market a product or a service. Mm -hmm. um, some people do it for news and politics. Mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, when we were at National Association of Broadcasters, the NMAX conference just this last, what was that, April, um, we had a couple different podcasters coming up to us telling us that they were actually doing shows for their community, their local, their little suburb, mm -hmm. that they were actually doing community shows in order to get information out about their community because most communities have those magazines and nobody's reading those magazines anymore. So they put out a podcast. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a tremendous idea. So there's all different reasons to use uh, podcasting, and each one of those has a completely different market, and so your market saturation is going to exactly. change. So, so when you're looking at, uh, I guess a lot of people are saying, can I make money from my podcast? That's where this <laughs> ends up going. Yes, but every like, but time. The, but the conversation seems to be, should I try to make money from this podcast? Too, a little bit, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because um, I know I, I've looked at a uh, few things, and, and usually they're not just unless, like, usually the number I hear is like 5,000 per episode per week, something like that is like a good, like, week. But that's like, but, but that's like using CPMs and, and, and marketing things I don't even understand. Well, and you're talking about different types of monetization as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, are you, t are you talking about a CPMs? You're talking about advertising. So right. now you're talking about sponsors. Right. Are you talking about sponsors or are you talking about partnering with another company that really meets your audience's niche? Mm -hmm. So you have that. You also have subscription-based paywall. Uh, type systems like Lipson offers My Lipson, which allows you to put bonus content or your older content, like your archives, or maybe all of your content if you really want to behind a paywall. So people will pay a subscription price per month, per six months, per year in order to access that content. Uh, or you have the Patreon model in which you're probably putting out the majority of your content for free. You may have some special content mm -hmm. just for your subscribers, but those subscribers are donating to you because they think you're worth it. And they, they kind of can almost pick their price as to how much they're going to pay you. It's a, very, it's, it's a combination of paywall slash PayPal. So it's kind of a, a neat little way. Some people will do straight up donations, affiliates. Mm -hmm. There's so many different ways to monetize. I know YouTube just started uh, adding fan funding to theirs. They want a little piece of that. And actually, yeah, well, YouTube doesn't too. monetize very no, well. No, they don't. So no, they don't. Don't uh, quit your day job. Yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> not to be a YouTuber. For, that's a whole other discussion. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, but, but it's a nice as a as a side to it get is. audience. I sure. think you know, just so it comes up in Google. You know, you got to think about that too. Um, so, or or you can get somebody that will send us a pizza every week, like we do. That works out really well for hey. us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Slice on Broadway. Plug. Um, <laughs> Well, we'll get extra topping next week. Anyways, uh, but any, uh, you mentioned um, you mentioned kind of uh, some of the paywall and my lips and stuff. I've actually had I, I think I was in an early pilot program for the application, the, the iPhone app. Um, oh, okay. And of course, I've, I've been looking at a little bit for a client too on the new version of it. Um, how you guys have one that will do iPhone um, and, and Android right now, right? Right. So you can get a well. There's a couple different app offerings, but mm -hmm. the main offering that you're referring to that most people would be interested in is standalone app offering. So you mm -hmm. can get an app that is developed and labeled specifically for your show. It's your branding. It's not a lips and branding. It's your branded show in an app. It supports audio, video, text, PDF, images, bonus content, the mm -hmm. whole nine. It is available for iOS, Android, and Windows 8 desktop, phone, tablet. Um, and we can also go into the Amazon App Store and, and so on and so forth. And that was really nice for us. At the time, I think, I think we got in a thing where it was like uh, we had to do like at least $2 for the app. And that's where we kind of started what turned into our Patreon model, where we did the gold content, which was the extra stuff. Mm -hmm. And maybe we're talking about something that's not wrestling and, and putting in there. And, and that turned into, well, let's just do the Patreon. And we had that content and add some more stuff on there. What's the importance of putting that app uh, you know, that's exclusively for your show, your content on somebody's phone like that? Well, I already told you, my mother has absolutely no idea what I do for a living. If I told her podcasting, she's like, 
actually, I have had that conversation with her, and it's exactly like that. <laughs> but uh, you walk up to somebody and you say, hey, I have this radio show, and there's an app for it. How many people do you know these days who don't know what an app is? My grandmother downloads apps on her iPhone. If I told her I had an, an app available for her in the, sh in the store, she could download that Zip Sam Zoom. Mm. So it's, it's partly getting over that terminology hurdle. Right. Uh, and the other thing is, is we talked a little earlier about the importance of iTunes. Mm. Well, iTunes is only on Apple. It does not exist on Android. It does not exist on mobile Windows. Um, it just doesn't. So if you only put all your eggs in iTunes, then you're only going to be on iDevices. You're not going to be on Android. You're not going to be on Windows. If you have your own app, then you are. And of course, you could submit to TuneIn or Spotify or, mm -hmm. or Stitcher and also get at least on Android. But then again, you also have that, hey, I have an app on such and such a market, and that makes it easy for people who may not be familiar with the terminology to get it. It, it is. It does. It, we are getting to the point uh, for for a lot of my shows where that list of hey, you can find us on this, this, and this has has gotten really long. <laughs> so yeah, it is kind of right. nice to to kind of boil that down to. We, we, well, you we got can give them bonus content. Right. Uh, so if you if you put out an episode and you have maybe a PDF transcription or uh, an ebook that goes along with it or something like that, additional audio. Um, you can do push notifications, mm -hmm. so you can, you know, hey, new episode's up. You know, let them know that the new episode is up, so you know to open the app and, mm -hmm. and view it. There is a car mode, so you can, you know, flip it horizontal and have big buttons, nice and easy to touch when you're driving, and it just makes it easy. One nice thing we found with it was uh, you can put your contact, in, contact info or email mm -hmm. and everything like that, and we have a hotline. That people can call, call the in. show. And then, like, nobody has to yep. remember that number, right? Even though we made it easy, we have letters in there and everything. But to have that, like, oh, I pull up the app, especially a drunk dial line would be really nice for that, too. Uh, so, huh? Yep, yep. Uh, but that they can just hit that button and, and, and call in, like, after, after a show, after whatever, and, and get their feedback in there. And it's 100% supported by our support team. You mm -hmm. don't have to handle your own tech support unless you really want to. But mm -hmm. there's a troubleshooting button right in the app. And if there is a problem or a question, uh, it goes straight to our team, and we handle that for you. And if a question comes into your show, you can just forward it straight to us, and we will handle it for you. You don't have to do the support yourself. <laughs> and that all comes part and parcel. It's the whole package. No well, extra fees. I want to touch base with one. Uh, you, you actually did uh, a pod camp last year, a session. I'm glad you did this because I was about to do one of these. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about Google Hangout, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know I've been, I, if you look at my blog, I, I, I was doing something for YouTube uh, this week uh, for a class. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to talk about Hangout. And I looked and I had like five to ten articles about Google Hangout I did. Uh, so I, I look at it as a replacement for, in a way, the studio that I have, because it does a lot. We actually have a lot of friends uh, on the show, on the network, that have kind of been able to do alternate versions of our show and expand the network, and they don't need me to go down to the studio and flip everything on and call everybody on, on Skype or whatever. Um, how important do you think that has become to people creating content for podcasting? Um, there are a lot of shows that are using Google Hangouts on air, uh, obviously enough for me to have written an entire session for the topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, Podcasters Roundtable by Ray Ortega. You know, he, the, it's really great for him because he can bring on four, five, six different people who are in the podcasting industry or who are podcasters, bring them on and do a round table. And it's literally like a round table. They can all talk to each other and they can all see each other. And then he just extracts the audio and puts that on, on to, onto iTunes. Um, but there are other people who choose to only use it for special episodes. You know, if, if they are bringing on a special guest and it's easier to do it through the video con conference uh, or if, you know, their 100th episode or, or something along those lines, then it might make sense to do a Hangout on Air. But sometimes it can, to be honest, be more difficult as mm. well because a Hangout on Air is not a podcast. A podcast is episodic content that is syndicated. A Hangout on Air is just a video that you put out there and it happens to go out to YouTube. 
you then have to pull that down mm -hmm. and you've got to extract it. You're probably still going to put your bumpers on it, your intros, your outros, and all of that stuff. Do all your editing. And now you're going to upload it to Lipson or Blueberry or wherever you're going to upload it to get it out to iTunes. So it adds extra steps. Mm -hmm. It's a great option. I use it for Lipson Live once a month. Every single month, I've appeared on other shows that use Hangouts on Air. It is a nice option. But if you're looking at it strictly for your podcast and you want to use that every single time as an easy way to record, there might be other ways that are a little easier. And to we're talking honest. about use it just for straight recording. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, but it, it does seem they do handle audio pretty well on their side. It's gotten too. better. It has. It's gotten better. When it, when it first started, it was... <laughs> Oh, questionable, and, and that compression when you pull out that audio can still be mm -hmm. uh, a little hinky, but for the most part, it's a lot better. Mm -hmm. And we've been using it for solutions, so uh, for clients that don't know how to do all the bells and whistles, it's been a nice starting point for, mm -hmm. for them too. Right. Like, okay, at least do this. You got a guess, and you can do this. You can hit record, and I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. It's nice to kind of boil it down. So, um, I think at this point, I, I think we'll open up some questions. Uh, we have a mic over here that our engineer is, is dancing over to. Uh, does anybody have any questions about podcasting? Anything you guys are doing that's, that's uh, it kind of lends to this going on? Where do you get? Yeah. Knowledge, would you use the mic? Cause oh, the live stream? Come on up. Hey. Hey. Bill the Law, also known as Knowledge Hudson from 10 Minutes of Knowledge, which you can find on the Epicast Network. Perfect. Um, props to the hardware store for making that happen. Props to you guys for being here. <laughs> and my question to you is, um, as far as the Spotify connection thing, and I know it's in beta, mm -hmm. but does that like take away the access? Like, you know how SoundCloud doesn't necessarily allow people to track the amount of people that download, that's registered with Lipson. Will, that, will we be able to identify, so if, if people listen on SoundCloud, will that come to us as far in the form of analytics will we you know if we send i mean sorry if, if people listen on spotify so if we say hey you should you know sign up for spotify because you can download the juice crew you know mm -hmm. podcasts or wait i forgot yours partner wait pod wrestling manager wrestling manager you could download you know what i mean so yeah. would it be beneficial for us to just say that or just send people to our normal networks and systems that we've been having people download you will get analytics from spotify uh, so that will actually appear in your stats section inside the Lipson dashboard. It will be separated out because Spotify does not provide that information real time like we do. They provide it on, what is it, like a daily kind of an mm -hmm. outlier that they send us and we process that and put that into the dashboard for you. That hasn't appeared in the dashboard yet because, as you mentioned, it's beta, but that has been developed and uh, will be available. So absolutely, you'll see your download and stream counts. Um, anyways, uh, but no, and actually, and there's uh, some other, not just Spotify coming up, right? Tune in. Tune in is going to be. We'll have one. a tune in destination. Now you can already submit to tune in directly, mm -hmm. uh, but there will be a tune in destination in our system that'll make it a little easier. I, I've actually been getting the tune in and through our provider, and then it's, it's not going well. <laughs> so, oh. what, is, what is tune in? Tune in is an internet radio. Uh, have you heard of iHeartRadio? Yeah. Okay, it's basically the same thing, just a different company. With they do support podcasts, yes. Mm -hmm. They're much easier to submit to than iHeartRadio is. <laughs> Typically, you would just send them an email. I think they actually have a link on their site that you can use to submit to. Um, but like Spotify, we will have a destination in the lips and dashboard, so you can just zip, zam, zoom right on through. Awesome. And those download numbers do show up in your lips and stats. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Okay. Oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Maybe I should be the one drinking. Seriously. <laughs> so, um, you know, we come from, from startup land, and it wasn't long ago that Lipson was, was probably a, a startup. So, so where are you guys at now? Like, what, what size, how many employees do you guys have? Uh, well, the entire corporation is Fab Universal, but the Lipson division has <clears throat> 10 or 12 well, we just brought in a new developer, so we might be closer to 12 now. So, so um, you guys had an acquisition at some point? Uh, yes, we did a reverse acquisition with Fab Universal. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. What, what do you think is the market opportunity for, for what you guys do? do you, what do you think in five years Lipson becomes? We're just still growing. Um, yeah. and, and podcasting is kind of... 
I don't want to say taking a shift in definition because it's still episodic content syndicated to a user. But part of that definition used to require an RSS feed. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, that's still true. Some pundits out there would say that, no, it must be off of an RSS feed. But that's kind of starting to shift. As Spotify, while granted what we're handing them is an RSS feed, you guys aren't seeing an RSS feed that you're submitting to Spotify. You know, so it's kind of, it's kind of shifting. There's a lot of people that are like our friend right here, Mike, uh, do you know a lot of stuff on YouTube and then translate that out to something syndicated. So it's really becoming audio and video, not just that old netcast you love kind of thing, <laughs> if I might steal the line. It's, it's really syndicated audio and video. And we're just going to grow with that. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you guys have geographic markets where you, where you feel like you've, you've gained market share? Are there markets you're working on nationally to try to get more people using Lipson as opposed to one of your competitors? I wouldn't say that we're necessarily specifically out there trying to reach a very specific um, geographic location. Uh, I will tell you that the majority of the podcasters, producers, come from the United States, uh, Western Europe, so the UK. Um, <clears throat> Germany, those kinds of places, and Australia, actually. The show Hamish and Andy uh, really propelled podcasts over in Australia, so that's uh, been a growing market. And you've seen growth continually over the mm -hmm. last five years, mm -hmm. right? I get plenty of support tickets from them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so brag a little bit about Lipson, because I feel like you're this uh, company in town that, that doesn't get the credit that, that perhaps you deserve. I mean, you were one of the <laughs> the vanguards of podcasting back in the day as far as podcast hosting goes and you continue and you persist and you continue to grow. So yeah, if yeah. you had to kind of sum up Lipson as, as, a, um, as an entity, like what's sort of the guiding philosophy or what do you think people should take away when they think about the company? Uh, well, our priority is making sure your content is always available and that you always own and control your content. Uh, that's actually one of the arguments that happens a lot between uh, different podcasting companies as to why you should pick us or why you should pick them or whatever. And the number one thing that I would say is always make sure that you own your content. Always make sure you can leave. Always make sure you can come. And as much as I'd love for every single one of you to use Lipson and always use Lipson and never go anywhere else because I have a mortgage to pay and a son to feed, <laughs> at the end of the day, you should always own your content. And that's been a border. That's been a top of the line philosophy of Lipson from day one. Is your son of a podcast? <laughs> no, but our VP of podcasting relations, Rob Walsh's son, does actually have a podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any plans in Lipson development to work on show migration? Show migration. Um, like can you elaborate? Taking a show from our Epicast umbrella and pushing it out to um, like its own its own RSS feed. But we were wondering, like, if it's already on the servers, is there a way to not have to pay to re-upload, or you know, to be dis a discount for you know existing current Lipson users? If you were able to take to ba batch all your files or batch whatever files and transfer them over to a new show feed that might be uh, I think, beneficial to... I think what you're referring to, correct me if I'm wrong, if I recall your show and your show setup, is you had... Um, the way Lipson works is when you sign up for an account with us, just, just for the people who aren't familiar with our system, um, you pay per show. Each show comes with a certain amount of storage. It comes with an RSS feed one, RSS feed per show, because at the end of the day, it's that RSS feed that really differentiates mm -hmm. one show from another. Uh, it comes with a blog page, media player, blah, blah, blah. But the, the main issue here is the RSS feed and the storage. So what some producers will do is they will sign up for a hosting account, and they primarily use us for hosting the media. They don't necessarily use our RSS feed. You might create one using like Blueberry, PowerPress, or together usually. Yahoo Pipes, or FeedBurner, some way of generating multiple RSS feeds outside of the Lips and ecosystem. But then what happens is you end up having all of your files under one hosting show at Lipson. So if you wanted to then take advantage of our other services, such as submitting to Spotify, mm -hmm. such as having a smartphone app, such as having stats that are show specific, 
and not having everything combined. You really need to separate those out so that they're individual shows and each one has its own RSS feed. There isn't currently any way to take content from one show and just plop it over to another show to move it from one place to another. Uh, it kind of all stays in the same place. So I believe what you're referring to is then you create a second show under your login and you have to re-upload. We have like seven, I think. We're trying to take one of the ones off the incubation based you know, RSS feed mm -hmm. and transfer it to another You'd one. have to upload that all to yeah. a separate show. But since you also pay for storage per show, that means that he's going to end up using up additional storage on that new show, even though he's already uploaded it yeah. on uh, the first show. Unfortunately, there's really no way around that. It's going to have to get re-uploaded, and there's also no way to move those stats over either. So uh, it's even if you're going to use a separate system to generate your RSS feed, which uh, there's reasons to do it and reasons not to do it, to do it that way, um, I still do recommend making sure that you keep your shows separate so that you don't run into that problem. Um, you have a ticket with me on that, right? I think we, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've already started the new RSS feed, but I'm okay. wondering if that's in development because yeah. it's, it'd be efficient because it's already hosted on the servers. So mm -hmm. if you can just change their, where they're directed to, to a new show, that'd be, you know, I don't know how much, I'm sure that's a pain in the ass. Feature the request. End, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I was, yeah. That's a feature yeah. request. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Dolly noted that is, and it does come up often, which is why I took the time to really explain it out because no, that know, does come up. Like situations like ours where we right. know, you know, we have a, a like right. an incubation thing that we plan to move those shows out. So right, right, yeah. So it, 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 work to mono and smash them up. For <laughs> upload, save on upload. Yeah. Cool. So right. feature request, Dolly noted. Yeah. That's, that's one thing, I, you know, I'm looking, I have a lot of shows, <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and uh, that, that's always been the hurdle is, you know, again, like, I have, how do I get this bulk from here to there, you know, a show that's been around for nine years, you know, do I move that or do I just kind of mm -hmm. give up on maybe past a few months and just let it go? Changing providers mm -hmm. is usually, depending on the provider, pretty simple, mm -hmm. actually. Um, we can import your content if you have a valid RSS feed mm -hmm. uh, and, and bring that all in. And then you would need to set up a specific type of redirect at your old host. So that's kind of the when you're picking a host, make sure that they allow you to do redirects. Not all of them do, which holds your feed hostage. Um, if that happens, then you end up losing all of your subscribers' ratings and reviews, particularly in iTunes. Um, but if you can set up that redirect, then you don't run that risk. You can make that move pretty seamless. Your subscribers will never even know the difference. iTunes will just keep on chugging, and most podcatchers will do the same. Um, so it really depends on where you're coming from. Uh, that process does not work if you're going from a Lipson show to a Lipson show. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, for reasons we can't use like an RSS feed sync from one Lipson show to another. So, uh, and in his case, it's all in the same feed anyway. So he's mm -hmm. literally having to separate out specific media files and episodes. So it's a m much different scenario. Mm -hmm. um, both migrations, but they're two different scenarios. And if that's something that you're looking at doing, moving from a different provider or have a specific use case where you know you need a little help finding your way through it, uh, feel free to contact me or contact our support team. We can walk you through it step by step by step mm -hmm. until it's done. And also the podcast, we mentioned the feed and, and some other stuff mm -hmm. that you do. The feed, really good. I, I, I listen to the feed and just to pick up on what's mm -hmm. going on and get some tips. I'm always, you know, just like the round table. Uh, always uh, just seeing what other podcasters are doing, uh -huh. you know. Uh, you know, I've always liked that here, you know, around PodCamp, you know, I get to try have a lunch with Doug every once in a while, see what he's doing. Um, and I always feel like, you know, no matter how long you've been doing this, there's, there's something you missed, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's yep. really nice to have that community. Yes. But, Absolutely. But um, um, any other questions? Any questions? Yeah. yeah. Um, I wondered if you could say more about the community podcasts that you came across and how successful they are or profitable, if that's. Um, I don't know that they were necessarily profitable, but I don't know that they were necessarily looking for profit either. Mm -hmm. uh, they were mostly trying to get information out to their community. And um, if I remember this particular gentleman correctly, there were actually several different suburbs in his area. And he had different shows 
for each individual community. So if there was like an event, he'd, he'd talk about it. Uh, yeah, anything that had to do with the community, he would put out there. So anything that you would normally put in one of those community magazines, he would do on the podcast instead. It seemed like he was pretty successful. No, I don't. Saw a lot of people at that show. I just, I, I, and I think I have his business card on my desk, but I distinctly remember him because it was, it was a use case that I hadn't considered before for podcasts. So we've got everything from, well, Elsie does yoga shows via audio. Yep. I mean, yep. <laughs> churches, I mean, churches, churches, but you know, there's up. churches are huge. Mm -hmm. They're really big and, and not just Christian churches. There's, there's uh, Jewish shows out there and Buddhist shows out there and uh, all, all different um, kinds of sex. But yeah, it's, um, that was it. That was a specific use case that I kind of latched onto because I thought that was really interesting. Because I know I pick up that magazine and I throw it right in the garbage. Because I just, I don't have time to read it. So, but yeah, I don't know what his numbers specifically were. They're a little more engaged of an audience if they're going to go to download that, that podcast. Mm -hmm. And you can more passively listen to it while you're, while you're working, doing the yard or something. Well, the Weather Channel every single day mm -hmm. puts out a five-minute podcast on today's weather. You can go subscribe to a podcast oh. from the Weather Channel and get today's weather for your area. Mm. You subscribe to your area, it's five minutes, and they tell you what the weather is. I don't listen to the radio. One of my requirements when I bought my car was, can I plug my phone into this car? Like, that was a requirement for me. I don't listen to the radio. Mm. I'm one of those people. My husband thinks I'm crazy, but I don't listen to the radio. I listen to my phone. It's all podcasts. It's Spotify. It's iTunes. I don't turn on AM or FM. So how am I going to find out what the weather is? Mm -hmm. Well, I subscribe to a weather podcast. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, the, the short bits, um, you know, because you know, I'm doing this, uh, I'm used to listening to hour, two hour long podcasts. I do hour, two hour long podcasts sometimes. And that's like where my audience is, you know. And, and I've been experimenting with doing 10 minute, three minute ones, you know, partially trying to find out YouTube audience Have you too. seen Clamor yet? I talked to the fellow from Clamor a couple weeks ago on my podcast, mm -hmm. actually, and it's, uh, you haven't heard about it, it's like 18 seconds. 18 seconds. Now, I'm using it, and Elsie actually was talking, I got in conversation with her on the podcast. <laughs> She's doing the podcast room. news reporting in 18 seconds. She is, I, and, and, <laughs> and uh, me, I'm just kind of taking highlights from my show, and I'm like, well, okay, it's another right. place people can discover me, um, and, you know, we're playing with that idea of, like, you can, and she talked about. I think she, is she reading blogs? I, I, we were having that discussion in the blogger for, forum on Facebook too. Like read the first like paragraph or whatever mm -hmm. 18 second bit of promotion the blog. Tool. Yeah, a promotional tool for something like yeah. that. If you have any kind of text piece of a book, you know, you put that in there in the right category. And it's never Some people are pulling a specific section out of their own podcast mm -hmm. and making that a 18 second snippet that they can then share to Twitter or whatever and then they put a link right. for the full episode in order to try to drive more subscriptions the to the nice show. part is they hear that clip and right under is like hear more and right. if you link the mp3 directly now that clamor app you hook became them. a podcast app and that goes from my mp3 feed on my server and that's another stat you yep. know, it's in our place they can find you. And it's been yep. pretty tremendous. Yeah. Um, and, and, and kind of that idea, because I was already looking at Instagram and I'm seeing these like 15 second tech videos, mm -hmm. you know, and, and people doing, you know, the headline stuff in 15 Katie seconds. Katie Couric mm -hmm. over on Snapchat. On Snapchat. <laughs> doing, you know? uh, she's doing 10 second news they're reports. They're 10 second news reports, but they're quick. Mm -hmm. They have images. They have text right on the images and it flies through and it just goes on to the next one and then the next mm -hmm. one. And Clamor kind of does the same thing where you follow a bunch of people or a bunch of profiles and when new stuff comes on, you hit the play button and it just 18 seconds, next, 18 seconds, next. It's the same thing, only in audio. And it's mm -hmm. great because you, you get your information right there. You can sit there and hit the tech channel and just hit everything from Engadget, TechCrunch, everything down the line. Yep. This Week in Tech, I think, even has even bits on there. Um, it, it, it's, it's, and you think about it, like when we first brought it up, we're just like, who would listen to this? But it's, it's kind of surprising. People, and people are listening to it. I mean, my numbers are okay on there, you know. I created a profile on Clamor just, just to see after I, yeah. we, we talked to uh, the creator down at uh, New Media Expo. And so I, I installed the app and, and I created a profile I've yet to post anything, and I have followers. 
they're just waiting for me to post mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I've not even posted anything. Well, it's just like the, the first, if you uh, if you got a meerkat the first week, you had yeah. you had two hundred people watching you do whatever, yep. and, and just like I just did that and threw it at everything I was doing just to expose them to whatever I was doing for the week. <laughs> and behind the scenes, every podcast I was doing, anything I could think of, just to be like maybe I'll get a couple new you know regular followers out of this thing. Hmm, what's really, this? This looks yeah, interesting. Exactly, and again, those early adopters, and maybe you'll hook them onto your thing. Uh, but it's really impressive too because you go in and and it's actually got a pretty good like multi-lined you know multi-track editor in there yeah and you can record stuff in there bring in stuff from itunes and you can like just create original content and uh that's not even have to go through that their portals way beta right now and uh kind of kind of herky jerky right now but doing everything through the phones is really nice mobile podcasting is girl you, you want you, you had asked about where things are going uh with, with podcasting that's actually one place i should have highlighted is mobile podcasting mm -hmm. um and, and not just from a listener's perspective the majority of listens are happening on mobile we all pretty well know that just by looking at our lips and stats right well there's also a lot of production too there's boss jock and alphonic and all these different apps you can use on ios and android and i've actually done uh, videos on how to do from both how to podcast 100 percent from a mobile device and microphones to plug right into the tablet plug right I, I, in I into, into the up, phone just picked up a blue uh, a blue uh, snowball mm -hmm. and uh i was like wait a minute i have this camera connector kit and i looked up and i found their right. blog where it, like connects right in to yep. my old ipad i'm like i can use boss jack now you the know? atr <laughs> 2100 with the camera kit and mm. the uh, and the iPhone and Boss Jock fifty dollar mm. microphone. How much is the adapter these days? Twenty bucks? I don't know. Like Apple 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 marks those prices oh, I have, up. I have the like old crazy. thirty pin connector one. So. Boss Boss Jock is nine nine ninety nine I think. Mm. And you just you've got yourself a podcast studio and you can take it anywhere you want. You you see people walking around New Media Expo with with their little ATR 2100 microphone doing interviews with people at Boost recording on their iPhone I, I and then it goes straight up to your lips and account yep. published out to your feed all right there on your iPhone. I actually saw this at WrestleCon a couple years ago and it was, just, it was yeah. two guys and one guy and he has the microphone he's got the little logo box on it and just the guy mm -hmm. standing by him making sure the, the thing's recording. Mm -hmm. So and, and just thinking about you know that versus a few years ago we did uh, New York Comic Con and it's me with this big Panasonic camera and going around and just sweating the entire time in that, that busy conference and just thinking now <laughs> it's like I could just take my eye. Touchcast is really impressive if you're doing mm -hmm. video. Free for some reason and uh and it's like everything i can do in wirecast in my studio is right there and uh you know talk to somebody in, in, in a school out here doing like teaching the kids in middle school how to use this thing and, and be a mobile production studio at these conferences these educational conferences it's, it's well, tremendous even right now we're wearing lavalier microphones right. on, on our collars so that the people at home can hear us and we've got these little packs sitting in our pockets that that go out to to a unit somewhere that feeds the audio in and you know it's this whole production mm -hmm. right sure and other companies are now making lavaliers that will plug right into your iphone so you don't even necessarily need this now you get into a question, of course, of audio quality. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're an audiophile, you're going to notice some degradation of quality. Uh, my, my, uh, my task cam is going to record a higher quality of a raw audio than an iPhone is going to. And that's just because of the hardware and the software that is used. It's just the way the things are built. And, you know, a $50 microphone, from from Audio Technica, great. Granted, that microphone is a very nice microphone for the for the price. But you know, you go to go to a Heil or, or something like that. You're going to have a better uh, studio quality sound. A uh, Sennheiser mic is going to have a better studio quality sound. But you know, if you're looking for mobile and you're looking for good enough that the majority of the audience out there is never going to notice a difference, there's no reason why not. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Any other questions? I think at that point we'll wrap it up. Oh, oh we got one. Yeah. There you go. Uh, I was just, uh, I'm, I'm very new to all of this. As you can tell, I'm, I'm an old man, so, you know, this is, it, it, 
all the young kids who so just understand all this stuff. And, uh, <laughs> uh, it's second nature, I think. But uh, I, 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 I'm very interested in what you were just kind of talking about. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe uh, to explain it to me in a way that I can understand everything. I, I'm interested in how you would leverage podcasts with video. Like, say, if, if I had something, and, and you mentioned yoga, I think that's a, that's an interesting example. You know, I would I would think that that's something that you would it would be very helpful to see how somebody was doing something as opposed to describing it. But there's probably ways I'm sure there is that uh, you can leverage podcasts to you know basically help people through yoga. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, I think that's a good example. My example, uh, I'm not going to elaborate on what I'm trying to do, but it involves cooking, and I think cooking is much the same way. It's better mm -hmm. if you can. Mm -hmm actually demonstrate and show people what to do yes. rather than read a recipe, you know, but I think there's maybe ways that you can leverage the video with the podcast. Anyway, that's what I'm kind of curious about, like, mm -hmm. yeah, just to throw that how, example how, out at you, like, how would you, it's how would not you that basically there, go about doing that? I there guess? are video podcasts. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, a podcast doesn't have to be audio. It most certainly can be video. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look in the iTunes store, if you're looking at a video show, mm -hmm. the backdrop of the page is black. Mm -hmm. If you look at an audio show, the backdrop of the page is white. Okay. If it's what they call a mixed feed in mm -hmm. which you have audio episodes and video episodes on the same show, mm -hmm. then it's white. Uh, you can actually go into the iTunes store and search for video podcasts or audio podcasts. And some shows will actually put out the same show in both. They'll put one out as video, one as audio. So it, it might lend itself to being better in a video show, mm -hmm. but you have those people who really just want to listen during their commute. So you give them that audio feed in case they really want it, so you're not missing out on that. Lips and Live, which is a tutorial Q&A series that we put on once a month, that's what I do. I produce it in both, a video and an audio feed. Okay. So it's on YouTube, and that's where the majority of our viewership is, mm -hmm. and, it, mm -hmm. and that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I also put it out to iTunes using a video feed and an audio feed, and we get listeners and viewers the same on both of those. Okay, well, now, uh, uh, well, that makes sense, and, and of course, I'd probably want, want to do some video work, too, but I would um, and there are some great cooking shows out there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Well, there's whole TV channels that people watch <laughs> you know? all day and watch nothing but cooking, you know. But, but uh, so there's no lack of interest in, in, in these subjects. But uh, uh, I think it, it's uh, well. I, I would like to do some audio stuff too, though. And I know mm -hmm. there are some audio. I have. I, I don't listen to a lot of them, but there are some audio. Like Martha Stewart has a whole serious channel where she talk. You know, they talk about cooking on the radio mm -hmm. all day long. And I'm sure there's lots of pods mm -hmm. casting her the same way. But uh, is there, uh, well, I'm just kind of curious. You, that, that yoga example is a good, I think that's a good example to, to maybe go with. How, what, what kind of podcasts are they do? Were they, now, are you talking about video podcasts for yoga or were they mm -hmm. audio podcasts for yoga? Yes. So there's a couple. There's many. There's many different yoga shows out there. Okay. Uh, yoga Amazing by Chaz. That uh, he's video, mm -hmm. primarily video, and and that's what you would think. Uh, oh well, I kind of need to see the move right. to be able to replicate it, mm -hmm. right? So you want it to be in video. Uh, Elsie's yoga podcast is one of the first yoga podcasts that was out there, and even though she hasn't released new content, she still gets tons of new downloads. Her show is and has always been audio only. It's an audio only show where she walks you through a yoga practice. She will walk you through a class. But one of the things that she does is she offers supplement material. And that supplement material may come in the form of a PDF with pictures of the poses and an explanation or blog posts with pictures and an explanation. Or she will occasionally do, like if it's a particularly difficult move and she really wants to show it to you, she'll put that supplement as a video up on YouTube. Uh, so you can supplement your audio material with something visual. If you use a standalone app that we develop for you and you put out an audio and somebody downloads that app, they can access your bonus content, which might be a supplemental video or a supplemental 
PDF where you can show pictures of the different stages of cooking mm -hmm. or uh, stirring that sauce or whatever it is that you want to show. So if you want to put out an audio show, one, you learn to be very descriptive with your words. And Elsie has talked about this, about how she has had to learn to really describe everything in detail using her words. So you become very good at using your words and you provide that supplement material. Okay, all right, well, hey, thanks. That was, that was helpful. Is it? Yeah, go ahead. I actually wanted to break this down into bare basics, okay? If you've got a, a show, like, you know, got an idea for a show, mm -hmm. you know, episodical, you know, I think it, my thought is I've got 10 episodes or whatever, I got these WAV files. What would you suggest as a good way to just do it. You know, I can create the audio, no problem. You know, make it all fun. What is my? What does Lipson do for me? And do I? I'm sorry. What does Lipson do for me? And what? Uh, you know, would that be the only way to go? Can that be my website? Can that be everything? Mm -hmm. uh, so, Lipson comes in after you after you finish recording and editing. So you've created you've created your content. You've edited it. It sounds great. It's awesome. You've got your MP3 file. Now you need a way to host it on the internet so that people can find you. You need a way to distribute it to say iTunes, as we keep talking about. That's what Lipson does. So you would upload that file to us. We host it for you. We make it available just like a web host would with a website. And we distribute it for you. So we give you the tools to make it easy to get that show, those episodes out to iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, uh, Facebook, Twitter, WordPress, any of those places. Um, now, when you, you're talking, you also mentioned distribution, where's the best place to put it. You mentioned a website. A lot of people just start with their website, and they'll upload the audio and just stick it on their website to, to be uh, listened to. And as they start to grow, then they look at a host like Lipson uh, and further syndication to social media, iTunes, Stitcher, et cetera. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, but with Lipson, mm -hmm. do, you, do you offer the ability to um, uh, to um, market this, or is this just a place to keep it? And like, you know, getting people to subscribe and find it, um, Lipson is basically just that place where it's keeping my MP3 file. We keep the MP3 file, but you need a way to actually get that content out to people. So how is somebody going to find your show and subscribe to it? To start, they're probably going to go into iTunes, find you in iTunes, and hit the subscribe button. When they hit that subscribe button, they're actually subscribing to your content on our servers. Okay. Okay. So that's how they get to you. And that would be the same, again, with Stitcher or TuneIn. When they hit that subscribe button and they're hitting play, it's playing off of our servers. And they're reaching you through us. If you post a link to your, to your episode on Facebook, that link serves from us. So we give you storage and distribution. All right, so basically the MP3 mm -hmm. resides in one place only, and that's it. Yes. Lipson, and you can get to direct it to there from many different sources. Right, and, and what those sources are is, is based on how you want to market. Do you want to market on Facebook? Do you want to market on your website? Do you want to market uh, on Tumblr? We can connect to a number of those third-party services, so that would become your marketing. Um, at least when you first start out. And then you can get into monetization, ads, paywalls, subscription, stuff like that. And we offer all of that as well. But we start at $5 a month, the bare basics, all the way up. Mm -hmm. nice. And you can grow uh, as you're going. It, 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 like, you can just step up to the next yeah. level. So yeah. as you're like, oh, I, my files are getting a little big and, and hitting that, that wall. Maybe I want to start an hour show or more shows a week. You can definitely fit that to grow with it. So. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Well, I um, want to thank Crystal for joining us. <laughs> Get back here. Um, so where can people find all the places you're doing things? <laughs> it sounds like there's a lot. So <laughs> I know of like two of them. So. <laughs> Lipson.com, of course. And you can find Lipson on Twitter as well, at Lipson. You can find me at Coco Tech. That's K-O-C-O-T-E-C-H. Uh, you can also find me youtube.com slash Lipson Tutor. That's our YouTube channel, and that's all the videos that I put out for Lipson. Um, I'm on social, Facebook and Google+, all the various 
you know, podcasting communities and whatnot. So feel free to reach out at any time. Of course, uh, you have a couple of sessions, like I said, on Podcast Pittsburgh's YouTube page. Yes. So go look yeah. up her name there. Yeah. Some really good sessions there. Um, and thank you to the hardware store for hosting us again, workhardpgh.com. Uh, jo Josh Lucas back there on audio engineering and, and, and telling me to move the mics and everything. Um, Missy on camera helping me out. <laughs> and thank you everybody for joining us.